the coming of the Son of Man, the great Makdi. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 27. My greatest and only desire is to bring true understanding of the Word of God, His prophets, and the scriptures which the prophets were sent with, pertaining to the lost found people, the American so-called Negroes of God, and the judgment of the world. You must forget about ever seeing the return of Jesus, who was here 2,000 years ago. Set your heart on seeing the one that he prophesied would come at the end of the present world's time, the white race's time. He is called the Son of Man, the Christ, the Comforter. You are really foolish to be looking to see the return of the prophet Jesus. It is the same as looking for the return of Abraham, Moses, and Muhammad. All of these prophets prophesied the coming of Allah, or one with equal power, under many names. You must remember that Jesus could not have been referring to himself as returning to the people in the last days. He prophesied of another's coming who was much greater than he. Jesus even acknowledged that he did not know when the hour would come in these words. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Matthew twenty-four thirty-six. If he were the one to return at the end of the world, surely he would have had knowledge of the time of his return, the knowledge of the hour. But he left himself out of that knowledge and placed it where it belonged, as all the others prophets had done. No prophet has been able to tell us the hour of the judgment. No one but he, the great all-wise God, Allah, he is called the Son of Man, the Mahdi, the Christ. The prophets, Jesus included, could only foretell those things which would serve as signs, signs that would proceed such a great one's coming to judge the world. The knowledge of the hour of judgment is with the executor only. The prophets teach us to let the past judgments of people, their cities, and their warners serve as a lesson or sign of the last judgment and its warners. Noah did not know the hour of the flood. Lot did not know the hour of Sodom and Gomorrah until the executors had arrived, and Jesus prophesied. Matthew 24, 37, 39. It will be the same in the last judgment of the world of Satan. You have gone astray because of your misunderstanding of the scripture, the prophet Jesus, and the coming of God to judge the world. My corrections are not accepted. Your misunderstanding and misinterpretation of it is really the joy of devils. For it is the devil's desire to keep the so-called Negroes ignorant of the truth of God until they see it with their eyes. The truth of God is in the salvation and freedom of the so-called Negroes from the devil's power. Can you blame them? No. Blame yourself for being so foolish as to allow the devils to fool you in not accepting the truth after it comes to you. The devils have tried to deceive the people all over the earth with Christianity. That is, God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Ghost. Three gods into one God. The resurrection of the Son and his return to judge the world, or that the Son is in some place above the earth sitting on the right-hand side of the Father, waiting until the Father makes his enemies his footstool. The period of waiting is 2,000 years, yet he died for the Father to save his enemies, the whole world of sinners. My friends, use a bit of common sense. First, could a wonderful flesh and blood body made of the essence of our earth last 2,000 years on the earth or off the earth without being healed? Second, where exists such a heaven of the earth that flesh and blood of the earth can exist? Since the Bible teaches that flesh and blood cannot enter heaven, Corinthians 15:50, Flesh and blood cannot survive without that of which it is made, the earth. Jesus' prophecy of the coming of the Son of Man is very clear, if you rightly understand. First, this removes all doubts about who we should expect to execute judgment. For if man is to be judged and rewarded according to his actions, who could be justified in sitting as judge of man's doings but another man? 
How could a spirit be our judge when we cannot see a spirit? And ever since life was created, life has had spirit. But the Bible teaches that God will be seen on the day of judgment. Not only the righteous will see him, but even his enemies shall see him. On that day, a son of a man will sit to judge men according to their works, who is the father of this son, coming to judge the world. Is his father of flesh and blood, or is he a spirit? Where is this son coming from? Prophet Jesus said, He will come from the east, Matthew 24, 27, from the land and people of Islam, where all of the former prophets came from. Jesus compared his coming as the lightning. Of course, lightning cannot be seen or heard at a great distance. The actual light, the truth, which shineth even unto the west, is our day sun. But the Son of Man's coming is like both the lightning and our day sun. His work of the resurrection of the mentally dead so-called Negroes and judgment between truth and falsehood is compared with lightning on an instant. His swiftness in condemning the falsehood is like the sudden flash of lightning in a dark place. America is that dark place where the darkness has blinded the people so that they cannot find the right way out. The sudden flash of lightning enables them to see that they are off from the right path. They walk a few steps toward the right way but soon have to stop and wait for another bright flash. What they actually need is the light of the sun, God in person, that they may clearly see their way. The lightning does more than flash a light. It is also destructive, striking whom a law pleases, or taking property as well as lies. The brightness of its flashes almost blinds the eyes. So it is with the coming of the Son of Man, with the truth, to cast it against falsehood, that it breaks the head. Just a little hint of it makes the falsehood begin looking guilty and seeking cover from the brightness of the truth. Sometimes lightning serves as a warning of an approaching storm. So does Allah warn us by sending his messengers with the truth before the approaching destruction of a people to whom chastisement is justly due. They come flashing the truth in the midst of the spiritually darkened people. Those who love spiritual darkness will close their eyes to the flash of truth like lightning, pointing out to them the right way, thus blinding themselves from the knowledge of the approaching destruction of the storm of Allah and are destroyed. As the lightning cometh out of the east, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Let us reflect on this prophecy from the direction in which this sun shall come, out of the east. If he is to come from the east to chastise or destroy that of the west, then he must be pleased with the east. The dominant religion of the east is Islam. The holy religious teachings of all the prophets from Adam to Muhammad was none other than Islam. Quran 4, 163. They all were of the east and came from that direction with the light of the truth and shone toward the old wicked darkness of the west. But the west has ever closed its eyes, and thus making it necessary for the coming of the Son of Man, the great Mahdi, God in person. Being the end of the signs, in his person, he dispels falsehood with the truth, as the sun dispels night on its rising from the east. Why should the tribes of the earth mourn? Because of the coming of the Son of Man, instead of rejoicing.